In this lesson, we'll manipulate faces and create edges to get the form we want for our mass. Alrighty, so welcome back. So now that we have our simple mass in place, now we can actually come back and kind of manipulate this thing and add further detail to this mass after the fact. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create sort of like a bay window style area here. And I'm, I shouldn't say bay window, it's mainly going to be the entrance area. So to do that, you can actually come and select your faces and we'll have to add an edge. And adding edges is a really cool and really helpful tool to actually allow us to get those kind of features in place. So to uh, go back and edit a mask that you've created, after you've hit that green check mark, just double click on that mask. And what happens is we can actually go back and select all those points, edges, and faces. Uh, and you'll notice that we're back in uh, edit mode because we'll be able to work with the in-place editor which allows us to either finish or cancel or you know grab all these controls that we would normally not have access to once we finish our mass. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and add an edge or to our surface. So I want to add an edge to the west side of this building here. It's going to be our entrance. And again, it's going to be in the similar form of a bay window here. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and use our toggling tool here. So I'm going to highlight my edge and I'm just going to tab until I get the surface that I want to add or manipulate and I'm going to select that surface. And you'll notice we're in shape because it's highlighted in blue and we actually can control it with those 3D controls. So now to add an edge to this flat simple large surface here come to the right of our screen to the top in our ribbon and in form element you'll notice this little graphic here it says add an edge just right there. So go ahead and click on that with me and what that'll do is it'll bring up this line work and as long as we're moving this line work right inside the boundaries of our surface we can place this wherever we need to so I can place it like so there and if I wanted to see what happens with that edge it actually created there's my line but I can actually tab and it created a surface there surface there but I can also access the line so in a way it kind of subdivided that surface but I still have access to the controls of this line now let's say I did want to go ahead and see what happens if I drag this out. I can actually select that line by itself or that edge and use my 3D controls to bring it out. Now I can see by the behavior of this I'm going to have to add a few more edges in order for this to behave in the way that I want to get that true bay window effect. So in this case I'm going to control Z like we did before to get back and I'm going to go ahead and hit control Z one more time to get rid of that edge. So in order for me to get the bay window effect, I'm going to need one edge here. And right there where the window flattens out, I'm going to need another edge, another edge, and a third. So we're going to need one, two, three, four edges. And I'll show you how we can actually use temporary dimensions to get the spacing we want to get. So let's go ahead and do it again. So we'll go back. We'll tab. Select our face. Come back to the form panel here in our ribbon. Actually, the form element, excuse me. We'll click on Add Edge. This time I'm going to kind of guesstimate where I need to go here. And I'm going to base it off of this midpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, my midpoint's here. I'm going to go ahead and drop it right there. Next, I'm going to go ahead and drop in another one. So remember, we needed four edges. So I'm just going to kind of estimate it again off this midpoint. I'll hover over the edge to locate the midpoint. And I'll just ever so slightly move my mouse up to the top to the center of my surface within its bounds to expose that edge line. I'm going to do the same here. Again, I'm just using that midpoint as my guide to get this accomplished. It looks like we could come back in here and do the same thing here. And we'll do the same thing on this side. This will give us a little extra edges, but I don't mind having the extra edges. Because I'm just going to get rid of that midpoint there shortly after. So now what I, want to, what I want to do, you could tell now the spacing on this bay window is just a little bit off and we have an extra edge. So I'm going to go ahead and evenly space everything out and then I'll delete what I don't want. And I'll show you how we can actually control geometry and line work using temporary dimensions. So what we need to do is go ahead and dimension these out, find out the distance, and then we can manually type in what we need. And I'll show you how we can use the equal button to just really quickly get everything to be equidistant. So come over here to the top in our ribbon, making sure we're still in our modify panel. And under the measure, or modify tab, excuse me, and under the measure panel, you'll see dem, uh, align dimension. So let's drop in a dimension. So to get the dimension in place, we want to make sure we're getting dimension from the actual edge, the single line edge and not the surface or the point. Otherwise, it's going to skew our model just a bit. So I'm just going to hover over this line. And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and tab until I get only the edge. 
I'm going to click. And I'm just going to move my mouse. And I'm going to hover over this. And I'm going to tab until I only get the edge. And I'm going to click. And I'm going to continue this process. Tabbing until I only get the exposed edge. Same thing here. And clicking, left clicking, once I get that edge I need. And now what I have is a string of dimensions in place. Now when I scroll in, you can see how off everything is. And if I want everything to be uh, equidistant, let's go ahead and hit the magic button. That equal with the line through it lets me know that things are not quite equal at this point. Go ahead and select it. And now everything is equidistant. And now we can actually come back out. I can select that string of dimensions. Hit the red X and the modify to get rid of it. Dimensions are gone. And now this is nice, uh, spaced out nicely. Now I do want to go ahead and get rid of the center one. So I'm going to select it. And if I had to, I can tab until I did get this particular edge, and then we can delete it. And you should get a warning. It's just Revit letting us know, hey, that geometry is gone, and that plane is now different. So that edge no longer defines that plane. Not a problem for me at all. So now I want to use my 3D controls to actually create the bay window. And again, we're going to manipulate uh, the spacing using with temporary dimensions. So now we're going to take the center surface. So I can highlight the edge, tab until I only highlight that surface. I'll have my 3D control here. And I'm just going to orbit so you can get a better view here. And what we need to do is we need to drag this out, left clicking and holding out this way to create that effect. Now I can drag it out a random number and it will drop in. And I can look at that and say, hey, that looks good. But if I have an exact distance, I need that bay window to actually protrude outside of this face of the building. I can actually come back around, try to locate that dimension associated with uh, that distance. In this case, it's the 20 feet. And I'm going to type in 15 feet to get the proportions I'm looking for. So again, we use temporary dimensions to control our geometry. Pretty easy and pretty cool, right? All right. So one last thing I want to show you is how we can actually combine geometry. So we have an entrance. We have the main volume to our building. But I want to really quickly uh, finish off our mass. So hit our green check mark. And we're going to create a separate mass. And I'll show you how we can join it to finish off uh, maybe having a place of egress for our building. So again, we're going to go back to our massing in sight. In place mass. Now this time we'll go ahead and name this one. We can call it uh, stair. Stairwell, I guess. Now, what I can do is I can actually draw this in place. So this time I'm actually going to use a primitive form here. I'm just going to grab a rectangle, and I'm just going to kind of base it off of that area, and I'm going to draw this in place. Now, if I know my exact dimensions, I can kind of use my mouse to get it in place. I know I'm going to want it to be 12 feet wide. So you can see that 12-foot dimension. But I'm also going to try to want it to be 25 feet in length. Now, if I can't quite get it and it's getting a little too tedious, go ahead and get it in place. And then what you can do before we finish or before we create the form, you can actually select it, either one of those sides, and that dimension will pop up. So you select a side dimension. It will give me the, the distance from this to the edge here. And again, I want that to be, uh, we'll say, 25 feet for now. In case that changes, we can always change it later. I can select that 2D surface, turn it to a 3D form. Just like we did earlier, we can come in here and add that 40 feet so that the two roofs line up. We've created our, our second form. So now we can go ahead and finish off that mass. And now we have one mass, two mass. But this is going to be part of the building. So if you did want to, if you are kind of working in this style where you're creating masses and you want to join them together, you can do so very, very easily. Um, just make sure we are in the Modify tab here. And right under here, underneath our Geometry panel, we can actually click on the Join button. And it's as easy as clicking two things, the two elements you want to join. So we want to join our larger one with the smaller element. And then, boom, it'll automatically clean up all your line work. And they're still kind of divided, but it's still one mass that you can actually begin modeling your building around. All right, so that's how we can actually create a really simple mass. So we learn how to, one, generate the mass or the 2D surface, then use the create form to turn it into a 3D form. We also learn how to work with temporary dimensions to kind of manipulate things and get the exact spacing and proportions we wanted. And we also learn how to work with the 3D controls to really mess around with this form to get what we wanted. So now that we have our mass in place, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how we can actually start working with uh, massing in floors and the roof. Uh, so we can get a better idea of uh, how this stacking model is actually going to be working. So I'll meet you in the next lesson where we'll begin getting.